Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here Wednesday now, the 12th day of June, 2024. All of a sudden, we've got two areas we are now monitoring for possible development over the next several days. Nothing that looks like it's going to be too serious anytime soon. However, there was serious flooding yesterday, as you probably are well aware of, especially in the Sarasota area, South Florida, Southwest Florida, and even today there's still very heavy rain down there. Once again, proving my point that rain is a significant impact. It is very much a part of the arsenal that these tropical systems can bring. So while we don't have any threat of any hurricanes anytime soon, these systems are already bringing us problems, and one of them might go on to develop. Maybe even both of them will outline that. I'll take a look at all the different parameters that I'm watching as we go forward. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. First, National Hurricane Center homepage. There's 90L. Parked right over Central Florida for the time being. If we expand this out to the seven-day version, there's 90L expected to get out into the Atlantic. And I'm going to tell you, it's this area. Yeah, I think this is green right through here that I think it has the best chance of developing into a named storm. We've seen them do that in the past more often than not. The Gulf Stream does magical things to systems. And, as I'll show you in a little bit, the Euro especially is pretty uh, enthusiastic, I guess is a good way to put it, about taking that system and developing it into a named storm well east of the coast. Uh, then our next system to watch is going to be down here. This is up to 30% already in the Bay of Campeche. So where we would expect activity over here in the western part of the basin this time of year, that is exactly where we are seeing it part of this overall pattern of a very busy hurricane season that we have been expecting. So the broad view, there is our gyre sitting down here over the Central American region, and then we'll be watching this for possible development. That's still several days away. Of The first concern, of course, is our system here, 90L. And then just look at all of this moisture and energy coming out into the Atlantic. I don't want to say from it, but that's just a large area of showers and thunderstorms, and I can show you that better when we look at the vorticity signature in just a moment. But first, let's zoom in here. And i tell you what, if you're in the resorts areas of uh, Orlando, uh, that low pressure area, the center, is sitting about right in there. A weak low pressure center. The heaviest of the rain is to the south and then out over the open Atlantic over here. But that is where the low pressure area is currently located. And, I guess coincidentally, and I can zoom in pretty good on this and show you, look down here very closely there's a pretty good area of maximum vorticity, at least in this situation, right there over central Florida. And there's the whole area of energy itself stretched out over thousands of miles, kind of like a grapevine. And then we just need to see do one of these areas sort of separate itself and become a mature grape or a watermelon or any kind of a vine fruit. You understand the reference, I hope. And this could do so as it moves out into the Atlantic and kind of get separated from all of this other stuff, that's where it might have the best chance of development. So let's shrink the map back down. We'll also be watching this little piece of energy and then the overall gyre structure down here. More energy right there. I've been talking about that on these updates. That energy comes off of these mountains down here of South America. The topography down there adds vorticity to the overall mix. And you get that flung in there and it can help to concentrate things and boom, You've got a low pressure area over a very favorable part of the basin, and that is the Bay of Campeche, and that could have some pretty big impacts later on. So speaking of impacts, here's the radar animation down here from the National Weather Service. South Florida currently in the thick of it, as you can see here, very heavy rain still. Um, basically west, if you take a line west-southwest from uh, near Melbourne and almost to Sarasota area south of the Tampa Bay region. Now it's all South Florida, at least today, right? And the heaviest of rain down here clearly near Miami, a lot of it coming across um, parts of the Everglades. But it's still training across that area, very heavy rainfall. And as I mentioned yesterday, when you get that over these urban areas, I'm going to show you a couple of videos in a minute, you really do have problems. So let's get to that. This is over in the Sarasota area. Our uh, colleague CJ lives here. He didn't take this video, but this shows you what it looks like. Very heavy rain, and that is freshwater flooding. And again, I mention our partner Quick Dams often. That's what that kind of uh, flood mitigation, their flood bags and various different water mitigation and flood mitigation methods could help against because this is from heavy rainfall. 
And yes, there are now available products to help keep that out of your stores. You see all of that there. That's got to be, you know, a, a big damaging event, and it slows down traffic, and it has economic impacts. Even an unnamed system. Well, it does have a name. It's 90L. There's another example uh, from the daytime hours yesterday. Very heavy rainfall down there. Again, just reminding you folks, got to keep hammering it. Rain is an impact. You know, I might get sick of me saying it, but we got to hammer that point home. And look, it's not even windy. There's not any tropical storm warning. And yet we've had a pretty disruptive event already from 90L down there in Florida. So, interestingly enough, um, and I guess relevant to the situation, Recon, first plan of the day coming out for 90L. This will be for tomorrow, and they're going to fly out to about 31.8 and 76.2. At least that's the preliminary thinking, and you'll see that tomorrow, assuming that they go along with it. They have to plan ahead with our wonderful men and women down there at the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Unit in Keesler near Biloxi, Mississippi, right? And I tell you what, I want you to follow this guy right here. Do me a big favor. Um, Mike Adcock puts together these cool graphics all about recon. And I like it because it looks like the departure board, you know, the old typical looking airline arrivals and departures, except this is typically just to departures for our invest area 90L. So give Mike Adcock a follow if you want an easy to understand and, and constantly updated um, recon Twitter page, whatever, right? Very good source of info there. So what's going to happen over the next few days? Now, there are some hurricane models getting run on our system, but it's so diffuse that I'm not going to worry about looking at the, the different spaghetti plots. Let's just focus on the global models. That's what I would do even without you all as my wonderful audience, okay? So this is what I look at. I'm going to give you a little insight as to how I work, and for those of you that have followed me for years, you already know, if you're new, well, here we go. Now, this doesn't mean that I am right or that I am the best. This is just what I do. I like to use the 850 millibar part of the atmosphere, so that's about 5,000 feet up, and I'm looking for this right here, the cyclonic vorticity, and that's represented with these yellows and oranges and occasional reds, and then you can just see the uh, the scale over here, you have your weaker vorticity at the bottom and much tighter, stronger vorticity uh, towards the top. And to, you know, the meteorology and the physics behind it, nope, we're not going to get into that. This is just looking for the clues. And it's really easy when we use these models. So this is the GFS operational. And um, let's go back one frame. In our system, let's use a color that pops out here, blue. There it is over Florida right there. But there's the rest of that energy stretched out over a pretty large area and then here is our gyre and just whatever all that mess is over Central America. So if we move this out into time notice 90L does get into the Atlantic it does try to concentrate that vorticity a little bit more but then it really kind of doesn't do much after that. If I move this forward you see it just kind of gets stretched out there's clearly a trough or something uh, the way the map extent is we can't see farther north but I can just deduce that there's probably a trough that comes by, sweeps this thing on out into the Atlantic, maybe gives it a little bit of an injection of what we call baroclinic energy, and off it goes. Now we watch this area down here, this big mess. Watch what happens with this over the next few days. We're at only four days out. So over uh, in the uh, Central American, Southern Bay of Campeche region, this tries to focus and concentrate, kind of getting buried down there because we've got a huge area of high pressure nosing its way in, ridging its way in as we call it, into the eastern parts of North America and so that keeps this thing buried that's why it doesn't look like it'll pop north more towards Louisiana or Texas so it stays kind of buried down there and then we're now out at a week alright, so let's just back it all up and we'll start over and watch the progression of everything first system, eh, tries a little bit second system, but notice too that piece of energy that does come around, uh, and this is only about three or four days out, there is some energy that's getting added to the mix, uh, either in the extreme southwest Caribbean or some of this coming off of South America. So it's a complicated situation. That's the bottom line. And there will be impacts. The last clue that I will give you, anytime you see all these yellows and oranges or whatever, 
That is sensible weather, weather that you can feel. You can sense it, right? Sensible weather underneath. Trust me, all of that is energy. That means there's going to be cloud cover and rain and very heavy rain at that. So, yes, there will be impacts even if this doesn't fully go on to be a named storm. Now, the Euro, this is last night's run. This is the 12Z run from this morning for the GFS. I don't have the Euro for 12Z just yet. But this is last night, and it is a little bit more aggressive, as you can clearly see with 90L there. That is a lot more organized than what the GFS was showing, and it goes on to develop it pretty solidly and takes it on out into the Atlantic again as that trough comes in. And then the Euro tries to get this next feature going as we get out to about a week, a fairly large system, big tropical storm-looking deal in the southwest Gulf, Bay of Campeche, whichever way you want to look at it. Not often do you see the Euro being more aggressive than the GFS. Normally the GFS likes to sort of take these things and it can run with them and you get these sort of convective feedback problems or whatever, and the GFS tends to overdo things. We see a lot of people mocking that on social media. Oh, the GFS is just up to its shenanigans again. Well, the Euro this time is more aggressive, so which model is going to be right? Well, that's why we do this. Stay tuned and we will all find out together. But at least for now, with the exception of the rainfall, which is an impact, we don't have anything major to worry about over the next several days, but we know that the busy hurricane season is upon us, and these are our first two areas that we're going to be watching very closely. All right, so I'm wrapping things up out here in Colorado as part of our hail project, and a lot of that is funded by our community, our Patreon community, and just kind of reminding you here that we are on Patreon, and we have this whole sort of universe built behind that. Uh, I don't like it to be a paywall. It's more of a membership, and it's an investment opportunity to fund what we do. And so you go to patreon.com, or you get their app, and you search Hurricane Track. And if you help invest in what we're doing, you have access to our Discord, to our Hurricane Track Insider site, where we've got all of those amazing cameras I think the best interactive tracking map out there, I'm a little biased, but it is an amazing interactive tracking map, and much, much more. Our documentaries, that when they get published, you first see them there. Podcast episodes called Story for, Stories from the Hurricane Highway. You name it, we got it, and it's all from our community. And, you know, crowdfunding is what so many people do these days, and it helps to make... Uh, look at what Reed Timmer's done. I mean, that's a great example uh, not working with any big media companies anymore. He's completely independent now. I think he does still collaborate with AccuWeather, but I'm just saying, look at that. He's got a million subscribers over on YouTube. It's an amazing thing what the Internet can do for people. So once in a while, I'd like to remind you that's how we do it as well, and uh, we are on Patreon if you're interested. And within the last year, they did allow it so that creators, that's me, can let anyone join the Patreon page, and then when you are ready to invest or select a membership. Um, I hate the word subscription, too, because you're not buying something. You're part of this community. But anyway, you can join up and be an investor when it suits your wallet. All right? And I think that's a really cool thing. So we do have a free side of Patreon. So check it out, patreon.com slash hurricane track, or just search for it in the Patreon app. All right? So I will be here in Colorado finishing up some stuff with Matt our colleague out here as we wrap up. We're probably towards the end of this first season of the Hale Project, and I'll do a whole different video about that in a couple of weeks, just kind of summarizing everything we learned and where we're going to go for 2025. But I will have an update for you tomorrow, and we'll keep tracking these systems. The next one up, by the way, is 91L, in case you were wondering, that one in the Bay of Campeche. All right, from all of us at Hurricane Track, I appreciate you tuning in. I'm Mark Suttoth. I'll see you again tomorrow.